Hello, everybody, and welcome to the... I'm going to do that again, because I think YouTube screwed up the timing. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the inaugural episode of the A-Star Interview Podcast. The goal of this podcast is for me to find the best developers in the world and learn their magical secrets so that I can become a better developer myself, and so can all of you, the many, many listeners of this inaugural podcast. Uh, here with me today is my good friend, Roberto Dice, whose last name I can never be confident that I'm pronouncing correctly, even though I've known him for probably nine years now. Uh, we went to college together, and he has generously agreed to be my first test dummy for this podcast. So the way this is going to work is I have a set of questions. Uh, Roberto has chosen the ones that interested him most, so I'm just going to get started with asking him some questions that will tell you all about his background and about what makes him an awesome developer, uh, and we're just going to kind of see how it goes. So before asking any questions, just Roberto, why don't you say hi to everybody? Hello, world. Good job. All right, first question. How old were you when you started programming? What motivated you to start? And how have your motivations changed since then? So I was about 12 years old, I think, when I started programming. Uh, I got my first computer about two years before that. Uh, and I've always been very curious about how I worked. I spent a lot of time in the computer, but I had never actually um, done any programming until I saw uh, that as one of my school activities, there was a visual basic activity. Um, and I joined. It was the least popular of them all. There were only like three people in them. But uh, I spent about a semester uh, learning how to program in Visual Basic. Um, it was really fun. I tried to make a game, and that utterly, utterly failed. <laughs> but um, that was my first introduction to programming. And after that, um, I started uh, learning a little bit of web programming, well, a little bit of HTML and PHP, but that was pretty much it. All right. So uh, what motivated you to start? Um, I was just, I had always been very curious about, you know, how computers worked. I never really had the courage to do it in my own computer because I thought I was going to screw it up and I was going to be left with that one. So it was great to have uh, some guidance and be able to, you know, screw with computers um, in my school's computer lab and not on my own. Um, it's just kind of like innate curiosity that motivated me to start. And then another part of the question was like, how have my motivations changed since then? I guess at that age, it was I was just like purely fascinated by, you know, computers and software in themselves. And now I think I'm a little more excited about the things that one can do with software than just like the pure workings of a computer. All right, very cool. Um, before I go on to the second question, I realize that I probably should have given a little background and introduction to Roberto and who he is and what he does. So in a sentence, Roberto is currently either the lead developer or the CTO of a Y Combinator funded startup called HireArt, which uh, creates a semi full service hiring process for large companies uh, that lets candidates take uh, tests and interviews online. Uh, Roberto, are you the CTO or are you the lead developer? What's your title? You call me lead developer. We don't have the, uh, official titles right now, but yeah, I think lead, lead developer will work. CTO sounds a little too grandiose for our stage. Lead developer, Roberto. All right, lead developer, Roberto, what are you working on right now, and why are you working on it? Because so, as you just mentioned, I spend most of my programming time uh, working on high art. It's a lot of work to run um, an early stage startup and to build a product there. So that, that takes up most of my time uh, when I'm in front of a computer. Uh, as you said, higher art is a, is a way that, well, it's a platform that connects um, job seekers and employers, so we try to make it, you know, um, make it such, make a system that lets um, candidates for jobs be able to, like, showcase their skills and um, not have employers judge them purely on, on a resume which many times cannot provide the full picture of the candidate. And we help employers uh, in a similar way because we just give them a better picture of the people that are applying for their jobs. So why are you doing that of all the things in the world? Why? Um, so I was approached by uh, one of the co-founders more than a year ago. And uh, I was working at another company back then. And uh, well, uh, I wasn't that happy there. 
so I left and I decided to give him a call. And I, you know, they, they spoke to me about it and I was excited about uh, what they were doing, so I decided to join. Okay. So question three, what are your main non-technical interests and what is your favorite band? Okay, so I try to read a lot. I try to read pretty widely. I go through like bouts of like different subjects I like to explore. Um, so reading takes a bunch of my time. Um, I'm reading a lot about like, European history right now, uh, which has been really fun. Kind of like try to build up a greater understanding of like historical landscape the last couple of centuries or more. Um, apart from that, I like to exercise. Uh, took a browning just a few months ago. Uh, still get sore all the time. Um, and I like to do bodyweight calisthenics at Tompkins Square Park. That's a lot of fun. It's a great summer activity now that it's getting cold. I need to find something else to do. So. We should go running together. I didn't know you ran. Yeah, we should. You definitely run much more than I do, so you'll leave me behind. But we should Not do. lately, but I need to get back into it. All right, favorite band. So I don't think I have a favorite band. I thought about this, but nothing that I could say this is my favorite band. I do have a favorite composer, though. Um, my favorite composer is, is uh, Bach. I've, I've loved Bach since ever, like, you know, from the first moment I listened to it, and I just keep coming back to it. So. Bach it is. My favorite band. All right, let's get into the programming meat of this interview. Uh, question four, what projects or experiences have you learned the most from, and what did you learn? So um, the first real big programming project that I undertook was um, the first startup I started working in. It's called Gig Maven. Um, I joined in 2008, right after college. And it was an online platform that connected music venues and musicians and allowed them to book uh, shows online. Uh, and I joined, I hadn't done much programming in a long time then, but um, I was out of college and uh, you know, I found this opportunity and I thought it was really cool. Um, and I basically learned m most of what I know right now uh, about like building a large scale software system. Uh, I learned Ruby um, working there which is now the programming language <clears throat> so, excuse me, that I use every day, uh, and just basically learned how to structure and, and build a software product from, from scratch. Um, Any specific learnings about structure building? I mean, there's tons that I learned. Uh, if you want me to distill you know, this wisdom in like a few nuggets, it's a little hard. Um, Give us one nugget. It doesn't have to be everything. I think decomposing your problem and um, coming up with the right entities, I mean, obviously, if you're using an object-oriented programming, uh, programming language, uh, is really, really important. And I think it takes a, a lot of time, and a lot of people kind of dive into it without giving it much thought. Um, that's one of the things that I learned is really important in, in building like, a, large, a large software system. All right. Question five. What ongoing developments in technology are you most excited about? There are tons of things that I'm excited about, but one of the things that I read about recently that I think is like really, really cool is um, computer-assisted like medical diagnosis. Uh, you know, like IBM came up with this um, computer called Watson that played Jeopardy and, and beat the Jeopardy champion in his own game. And now it's being deployed uh, to assist doctors in coming up with, with diagnosis for patients. And I think it's a really, really cool development. And I think it's like a great application of computers. Like whenever you have this like um, you know, defined and structured body of knowledge, like you know, medical knowledge, you know, there are other fields too, for example, law, and you need to reason on it or like make deductions on it based on some observations or input. Um, you know, humans are good at that, but I think that computers could also be really good at that and, and complement humans in coming. Um, to a conclusion about that. So I think that's something that's really cool. Another thing that I, I'm really excited about, and it's also in health, is um, uh, genomic sequencing and the possibility of having a medicine to be personalized uh, according to what's in your genome. I think, I don't know too much about it, but it sounds like it could be a really um, important development in technology and health. Just have, have a doctor 
possibly assisted by a computer um, to, you know, figure out what's wrong with you and determine, like, the right course of action, um, kind of knowing what your genetic makeup is as well, which I'm sure it's, in many cases, an important factor. Have you had your own genome sequenced? Uh, not fully, you know. I took a 23andMe test recently, and there was lots of really interesting results. Uh, I was really curious about my ancestry composition. I'm from Latin America, so my my ancestry is like really diverse, I guess, and also largely unknown. So it was good to figure out like where my ancestors came from. Uh, turns out they come from all over the place. All right, so structured medical reasoning and personalized genomic medicine sound exciting. Uh, question six. What metrics define a good technologist, and what are the key virtues of a technologist or of a solution? So I have a question for that. What did you mean exactly by metrics there? Like, by metrics, you just mean any kind of... Just what measurement? Like, you say, this solution is really good because it makes users smile or because it's super fast, or what are the most important things to look at? In a solution, because I wrote some things down for technologists, for people. Um, is that okay? That's fine. Okay, cool. Um, so I think that, I mean, the most important thing is just to be really dedicated to make something that solves a problem and works really well. Like, I think that a lot of people are a little sloppy or not that careful, and um, a lot of people don't really care too much about um, the tools that they're using and understanding how they, how they work. And I think that's... If it's not like necessary all the time to, to come up with a good solution, it definitely helps um, when it comes to um, coming up with a good solution at some point. Not all the time, but sometimes. Um, so, to, and, sorry, what's that? Uh, and just additionally, I just another thing that is important is like just like tempering that with the willingness to like, um, see the project through completion and get things done. So not get lost in understanding the entirety of your tools or, or just, like, remain purely in the realm of the, the theoretical, but just, like, have the willingness and, and the power to just plow through it and finish things off. Yeah. Okay. So a good technologist is dedicated, understands how his tools work, and gets his, hand dirty, gets his hands dirty getting things done? Yeah. I see that, I mean, a lot of people, like, really, really try to understand code, and they get lost, and they just just don't finish because the solution after I mean becomes or like the problem or the project becomes an interesting update after they understand it without fully completing it. Huh. Okay. Question seven: Do you have a personal secret sauce, or what is it about your output that people respond to? Um. I don't know if I have a secret sauce. I've been told that I'm pretty good at, and this is something I mentioned before, is like at, at kind of looking at a problem and finding out how to break it down and come up with, um, you know, a good solution to, to what's happening. I think part of it is because, um, you know, so I studied philosophy in college, and when you do, like, metaphysics and stuff, you, you really talk about what kinds of things there are, and I think that's an important question when you're trying to build software. Is like, what are the kinds of things that act in the system, and... You know, is, is this, like, uh, uh, an object that is acts like a, a continuous thing, or is it, like, an event that happens, you know, like, being able to identify what's the right, um, you know, kind of thing that you're working with, I think is uh, something I'm, like, pretty good at, I think, and I think it's also something that's important. So if that's a secret sauce I have, uh, that's, that's it. Okay. Um, we are actually surprisingly somewhat under time, so I'm just going to throw a couple more questions off my list at you. Um, what's the hardest technical problem you've ever solved, and how did you solve it? Uh, that's a tough question. Or just a very, very hard one. It doesn't have to be literally the hardest. Mm. So s scheduling stuff is really hard for GitMaven. I had to build this like scheduling system that let um, you know musicians and venues start a negotiation for a show 
and then you know you had to provide the flexibility to be able to like change the date and cancel and like there are a bunch of states that this negotiation object could be in, um, and then we had to aggregate those um, you know shows that happen the same date into like another object which is like a larger show or event. Um, I just found that scheduling was was pretty tough. I can't remember exactly how I solved it. I mean, that would imply discussing like the details of the solution, but that's probably one of the hardest things that I had to figure out when I was was building something. Okay. Um, another question. I have one picked, but I can't remember what it was. So I'm gonna keep reading. Uh, what is the most common mistake that you see other programmers making, or what is the most common piece of advice that you find yourself giving? I think, as I said before, one of the, the mistakes I see a lot of programmers are making is just to rush into code coding without fully planning out, or not maybe not fully planning out, but like having a clear picture of how their solution is going to look like, uh, either in their minds or in paper. Uh, a lot of people think that because they are programmers and maybe they're being paid to write code, like that's what they need to be doing all the time. And I think that it's really important to not write code for a while and like have a, a, a good, um, you know, picture of what what it is that you're going to implement. There's also something to be said about you know starting something and then figuring out the details um, as as you're writing it. Like it's also kind of impossible to have like a full, full, and complete detailed picture of, of your implementation or your solution before you start coding. But um, I think a lot of people err on the other side, which is to like, just dive in without thinking through things um, enough. OK. Well, that has been an enlightening series of answers. I think we're going to wrap up this inaugural podcast. And uh, thank you very much, Roberto. What's going to happen now is I'm going to get the names of two more excellent programmers that Roberto knows, and then I'm going to track those people down and try to repeat this podcast and then repeat that process ad infinitum until I have interviewed the best programmers in the world. Uh, it's called The podcast is called A-Star Search because this is loosely an A-Star graph traversal algorithm that I'm carrying out in real life, and you guys are going to get to watch the progress. But... Uh, Give a nice spiritual telepathic thanks to Roberto because there's no way that you can literally do it because we're on the internet video tube. All right. Thanks, Roberto. Cutting out now. This is fun.